Many people repurpose old furniture to give it a new life. You can purchase used pieces and refinish, repaint, and rebuild them until you have something completely new and unique. Here's something we've recently redone. It's an old safe that we picked up in a metal scrapyard. We refinished it, and now we're using it as an end table. It weighs a ton, like as heavy as a piano, but it makes a great end table, doesn't it? No, wait, hold on, that's all wrong. Nothing I've just told you is true. This isn't an old safe, it's brand new. It isn't metal from a scrapyard, it's wood from a hardware store. And it's not heavy at all. And that's not the end of my deception. You see this cake? The cake is a lie. We built an end table out of wood and painted it to look like an antique safe. Pretty cool, huh? But you aren't on this video channel to see things that are merely cool, are you? You're here for awesomeness. And you know from seeing our other projects that there is more than meets the eye. You're right. This safe is packed with functionality. It's an end table, the likes of which you have never seen. The electric safe features custom art. It has real, and mostly real, safe hardware. It is a standard size end table that sits between a sofa and a chair. We moved the chair for this shot. The safe is made of wood and has been painted to look like metal. It has been aged and distressed to look like a real antique safe. But the electric safe's real purpose isn't art. It was built primarily to solve an electricity problem. You see there's a walkway behind the sofa and the only usable outlet is a floor outlet that the electric safe is sitting on top of. One outlet is not enough. There's one floor plug with two outlets. It powers a lamp. It powers a laptop for one person. It powers a laptop for someone sitting on the other side. It powers the charger for the first person's cell phone. It powers the charger for the second person's cell phone. This leaves us with a deficit of three plugs. With a power deficit that large, we clearly are not gonna be winning any space battles today. The electric safe sits on top of and conceals a floor outlet but it has some outlets of its own. There are internal outlets inside the cabinet and external outlets on the back that include USB ports. And there is a wireless phone charger concealed right on top of the safe, completely invisible. In addition to this, all external wires are hidden. Notice that the lamp has no wire. So it looks like a safe, but it is so much more than that. Well, now that you see what the electric safe can do, we'll show you how we made it. The first step in the build process is to cut pine boards into the proper widths and lengths that would be needed to build the box. The sides and back of the safe will be quarter inch plywood. So here we are using the router to notch the vertical support so that we can inset those sides. These are the horizontal supports that are on the front and back of the safe that I'm gluing together. Next, I glued together the vertical and the long horizontal pieces that will be on the left and right side of the safe. We call this tool stand the old switcheroo. It has the router on one side and a sander and Craig jig on the other. All of the support pieces are run through the belt sander to square up their edges and smooth them out for paint in the future. The safe is a cabinet, so that means it has an inside where we can put pocket screws that will never be seen. And now we attach the pieces together to create the front and back of the safe. This piece is the front of the safe. The large opening is for the door. With the front of the safe still lying face down, I attach the supports that will form the left and right sides of the safe. The back will be attached to the top of these runners. Remember that quarter inch plywood I told you we were gonna make the sides and back out of? Well, here it is. This is the back piece for the safe and I'm applying glue inside that notch we cut with the router earlier. Now we just lay that plywood down here in the hole and clamp it down to form the back of the safe. Now it's time to put in the left and right sides. First, wood glue goes on and then the side is dropped into the notch cut by the router. 
Once the sides are in place, the back is put in and screwed into place with the pocket screws that were already drilled. Next, everything is clamped down to give the glue a chance to hold. And then I go have dinner because it's going to take a while for this to dry. Well, it's been a few days and I've got all the clamps off, so let's get back to it and get this thing built. This is where we are in the construction. The sides and back are in place and all the structural pieces are screwed and glued together. Now it's time to cut the bottom using half inch plywood. The supporting structure for the bottom is hidden so I pulled scraps out of the scrap bin and attached them to the bottom. Nobody's going to see this so it doesn't matter how ugly it is. And it's a good way to use spare wood. Also, you can never have enough clamps. That's a rule. The back of the safe will feature an outlet that has two 110 volt plugs and two USB plugs. We'll talk more about that later. Here I'm cutting the access hole for that outlet. When your friends hear that you do woodworking, a lot of times they'll just give you wood that they have laying around. This is an example of that. It came from a closed down cabinet shop and it's true one inch thick pine wood used for countertops. We will be using this countertop wood for our countertop, which was its original function anyway. I'm using the router to round the edges of our countertop because metal is round and wood isn't. So in order to complete the illusion, rounding it off is the way to go. The top won't be removable, so it's okay to glue it down. And I'm not using screws because I don't want to have to fill those holes and sand them down. The point here is to make a seamless connection to the side pieces so it looks like a single piece of metal. Clamps hold everything down. And a nice thing to do if you run out of clamps is just use your ammo boxes. You have ammo boxes laying around, don't you? Now it's time to sand the entire structure and sand it and sand it and sand some more. It has to look like metal, so it has to be sanded very smooth with very high grit sandpaper. The top is covered with a thin layer of epoxy to give it extra strength and also to hide the seam, and it also is sanded. After all the sanding, and can we just take a minute to appreciate the sheer amount of sanding that went into this? There was a lot. But after that's all done, we apply high build primer. High build primer has talcum powder in it and it fills gaps. Very important if you want to make wood look like metal. You apply the primer, sand it, apply the primer, sand it, and so forth until you have a smooth surface. And once you have that smooth surface, you can apply the paint. In this case, green institutional paint. We did consider brighter, more exciting colors, but then we realized that this was a safe from the Old West where they did not have brighter and more exciting colors in the back office. So we stuck to the green. You can really see here how the thorough preparation that gave us a glass-like surface is looking like metal now that it's being painted. And making it look like metal was the point of all this effort. Okay, the structure is built and it's painted and it looks like metal. It looks like a metal safe. That's cool, we could stop here and call it a day, but really, why do we build things here? To pack electronics in them to do cool things. So that's the next part, let's get to the electronics. The back of the safe is quarter inch plywood, nowhere near strong enough to hold the outlets, so we built this wooden pole we call the spine to mount the outlets on. This is the external outlet, and this is the internal outlet. Each outlet will be powered by the same power source. One will have two 110 volt outlets, and the external one will have two 110 volt outlets and two USB outlets, giving us a total of six outlets on the safe. The outlets are grounded to the power cord that will run down through the bottom of the safe. Even though we've tripled the number of outlets with four 110 volt outlets and two USB outlets, we aren't worried about overloading the circuit because everything plugged into it is low power. Even the lamp uses LED bulbs. So this isn't going to be a strain on the breaker in any way. With the spine test fitted into the back of the safe, it's time to drill the access port for the power cord. Remember that the power source for this safe is directly beneath it, so the cord just goes straight through the bottom and it'll plug into the floor. With the power cord threaded through the bottom of the safe, it's time to wire up the two outlets and get them ready to install inside the safe. We use masking tape to protect a strip on the back of the safe so that we could use glue to glue the spine down to the back and part of the top section. We don't rely on just the glue, we use two screws to hold it down too, to make sure that it isn't going anywhere. Next came the hole in the top that we would use to hide the lamp cord. With the internal structure built and wired, it was time to start putting the hinges on. These were the heaviest hinges we could find that were not prohibitively expensive. And they matched the exposed hinges found on most antique safes. 
With all the other pieces complete and hinges in place, it was time to build the safe door. The safe door is just another piece of that half inch plywood we use for the bottom. We're using scraps? <laughs> That's what we do here. Half inch plywood is not thick enough to support the hinge depth that we have, so an extra strip was added to increase thickness and give the hinges something to screw into. Then the door was test mounted on the hinges, clamps holding it in place until the screws could be put in. Care was taken to leave some space around the edges to account for primer and paint when the safe door eventually was painted. Now we need to talk about how we're going to take our wooden box that looks like metal look like a metal safe. Well, the way you do that is to add safe hardware. Well, I don't have any safe hardware and I don't know where to buy stuff that doesn't cost an arm and a leg. So I reached out to some of my friends. It's good to have weird friends. I highly recommend it. And one of my friends happens to work in the banking industry. He does work on safes and ATMs and banking, things like that. And as far as you know, what he does is completely legitimate. But he gifted me with a whole bunch of parts from safes that he picked up in the course of his, of his work. So I have all these parts that I can pick and choose from to use for our safe to decide what's going to look good and what isn't. So uh, with all this to, to pick from, I picked the best stuff we could possibly use that would look like what we needed it to look like. So that gives us a really good dial for our safe that we can use to pretend our wooden box that looks like metal is actually a safe, a real safe part. The knob is a toilet flush handle. Yes, this is toilet hardware. I'm not here to judge anyone, but what kind of decor would go with this kind of strange toilet flusher? Nautical theme, perhaps? Who knows? Mounting the safe dial was pretty easy. It just needed a hole. It already had a threaded rod, and once that was in, you could secure it from the back with a nut. The four-handled knob required a little more effort. It was designed for a toilet mount, and this meant that it had a round hole on the back and a square hole on the front. The square hole on the front gives it an anchor point so that it can spin and turns. It allows you to turn it as if you were, say, flushing a toilet. In our case, it just makes it look like we're turning a crank to open the safe. With all the hardware in place, it was time to mount the door to its hinges and close it to make sure it fit. It did. And now, with the safe sitting on Cardi McCart face, our shop cart, let's take a look at it all the way around. Not bad. Not bad at all. So now we have the wooden box built and it looks like metal and the hardware on the front makes it look like a safe. So that's very good. Let's look at what these electrical components that are inside the safe give us. We have one outlet for the lamp, another for that laptop, another for that second laptop, a USB port for that cell phone, and a second USB port for that second cell phone, leaving us one plug available. Oh yeah, almost forgot. We painted the door because it's good to have a metal door on a metal safe. So now we have a metal safe with metal hardware on it, all the electrics wired in and everything else. It's time now to put some decorations on it and age the safe to make it convincingly antique. Antique safes often feature artwork and special fonts to make them look very nice and fit the office space. We decided to do the same thing. So how do we do that? Well, it's true that we have a paint booth here in the shop that we use to paint large things. It's also true that none of us here are artists and paint things like we just saw in those safes, the portraits and fonts and pinstriping, way outside of my wheelhouse. But we have a friend who can do that sort of thing and she offered to help us do it. So all we needed to do was find something that we wanted painted. Well, you should decorate your house with things about you, things that you enjoy, things that bring you happiness. And so we thought about what we could put on the safe that would be interesting, cool, about us, but would sort of fit the look and feel. And I started getting some ideas. My dad used to fly jets off of aircraft carriers. There's a pretty good chance this is him right here in 1968. That's pretty cool. He flew off the USS Constellation. That's also cool. So we decided to put a supercarrier and a jet plane, two things that did not exist in the 1800s, on our safe from the 1800s. Because of course those are historically accurate. Well, no, they're not accurate at all. But 
when you're making your own art, you can do whatever you want. Your art is whatever you say it is. And if you want to put historically inaccurate things on antiques, that's fine. It might freak out some people who follow history. That just makes it more fun. Custom art can be so much better than off-the-shelf prints. Look how great this aircraft carrier looks. And that's my dad's plane. Amazing. The paintwork was finished and it looked fantastic, but it was still the flat green paint we'd started with. So we applied glossy clear polyurethane. Three coats later. So much polyurethane. And that was the last step of construction. Just look at it. The electric safe looks real. You'd never know that was fake. So the safe has a hole on top for, for this wire to go through. But as you can see, the wire comes out like this. But we don't want it to do that. So we're going to modify the lamp so that the wire goes straight down. First, we had to disconnect the wire from the top of the lamp and then pull it through the original hole. Once the wire was out, we threaded it back through the base and reconnected it at the top. Now it's time to make the wire disappear completely by threading it through the hole in the top of the safe. The lamp can now plug into the outlet inside the safe where no one has to see it. Look mom, no wires! Then one of our phones died and the new one had an inductive charger on it. Inductive chargers are fast, they're flexible, and they're wireless. This whole project is about hiding wires so we decided to incorporate an inductive charger. So I got an inductive charger like the one in the picture and tore it completely apart as soon as I got it. That's kind of what I do. And I ended up with just the charger itself. It's a circuit board and a round coil that charges the phone when you hold the phone against it. All you have to do is put your phone on top of it, the phone detects it, and starts charging just like this. But in our case, we were going to have some wood of the countertop between. So I got the thickest piece of wood it would allow, which turned out to be one eighth of an inch or about three or four millimeters. And I put the phone on top. Any thicker and it wouldn't work but this thickness worked. We decided to put the inductive charger into the safe, of course, after the safe was finished. In fact, it's been in use in the house for about a month. It's been working very well, but to add this, I had to bring it back out here to the shop uh, and, and cut the hole. We try to future-proof these things that we make as much as possible by putting additional space inside, more electrical outlets, that sort of thing, so that when we find something like this, we can put it in without modifying the piece too much. In this case, we already have the extra electrical outlet, but the deck is too thick and I've got to round out to it. So as you build things, think about what happens when technology changes in the future, what might you want to incorporate. Go ahead and build the space in so that you can do that later. But to make this work, I've got to take this deck down to about four millimeters of thickness. And it's about three quarters of an inch, um, maybe 20 millimeters in depth, I haven't measured it exactly. And I've got to mark off an area inside here and hand route a trench this big. It's got to be large enough for the conductor, the circuit board, and a piece for the cable to go in for it to work. Now it's a little scary because freehand routing is not my strong suit. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just not that great with the router, so I'm going to take this in very small cuts. I'm going to cut this a little bit, shave a little more, shave a little more, and see if I can get it to where I need it without coming through the top and ruining this. You may hear the thunder in the background. It's a rainy day here in our town. And uh, the thunder, I hope, is not foreboding disaster. But uh, let's get to it. it. It'll be fine. It's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. I marked off where the center of the coil should be. And then I put in boards to give the router a guide. Then it was time to run the router.
And that was pretty scary, and I got the thickness down to almost paper thin. But the router did its job. It didn't, it didn't waver, so I've got the thickness I need. Now let's get the uh, inductor put in, see how it looks. I routed out an additional section to the left to give the cable a place to go. I laid the coil down, and then I poured 5-minute epoxy in. The epoxy will hold the inductor in place as well as give strength to the wood which is now too thin to really support anything. Once the epoxy hardened, I attached the cable to the ceiling of the safe and ran it back to where that sixth outlet is. Remember, you're seeing this upside down, so this is actually the top of the safe. Completely out of sight for users, but it's there doing its business anyway. And now you just take your phone and drop it on the safe, and boom, it charges. So now we have a super cool end table that was cheap to build and has a variety of functions. Some of the magic. It has a toilet flusher for a knob. That's a unique feature right there. It features artwork that relates to us and brings us happiness. And that's the thing. The stuff you make should make you happy. Think about incorporating happiness in your next build. It's definitely worth it. If you like what we're building here, you like the things that you're seeing in the videos, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you know the next time we put a video up. We're always building stuff and we love to see you watch the videos and like them. See you next time.